So in the last video, we just built this really simple form uh, and proved that we had everything working correctly. Now we're going to uh, tidy it up a little bit and add a little more functionality to it. Um, one of the first things that we want to take care of is age. So right now we are, the user is typing in an age and they're clicking submit. And in results, we are capturing age, but we're just capturing it as a string. So if we wanted to do anything with age, um, we're not able to do that. Age is a number, but we're treating it as a string. So let's make it a number. Um, number, my two basic choices would be uh, integer and double. I don't expect a decimal point uh, in the age, so I'm going to make it an integer. But it's coming across as an object which is more closely related to a string, and I'm trying to convert that into an integer and it doesn't really like that. So I'm going to have to parse it uh, into an integer. To do that, it's going to be integer parse int So essentially what I'm saying is I want the data type integer my variable name is going to be age. To populate age, I need to parse the integer. Whatever comes across as age, I need to parse it into an integer. So if they mistype and put D in the age category, this is going to fail. If they put 12 in the age category, this will parse into an integer and populate. So as an example here, uh, if I wanted to tell the user what age they'll be next year, just a very simple calculation, I could declare a second variable, give that variable a name, take some action on it, so age would be the integer here, I'm going to add one to it, and then I'm just going to display that out down here. So I added a new row to the table, next year you will be, and the name of this new variable name that is your age plus one. So I could not do this if I were capturing age as a string. You can't do math on a string. So let's uh, save it all up and let's take a look. And I can see that it's doing math correctly. It's capturing the age as an integer, parsing it to an integer, and then it's adding one to it. Looks good. Um, now the problem, if the user omits the age, they fill in all the other field but leave age out, it'll get an error. And this is a pretty nasty looking error. Basically, we're trying to do um, math back here, so we're trying to parse an integer, and that integer is null, so we can't parse null, so it's having this problem. So I need to make sure that the user knows that age is a required field. So one of the simplest things I can do in an HTML5 text box is right at the end I can use required. And then when I save that up, it gives me the required field. So if I type in a number, it'll work correctly. If I type in a letter, I still get this error because you cannot parse D to an integer. So it's very simple, very basic validation. It's called required field validation, but it's something. It's something we can use. We'll look at how we can do more detailed validation later. So I have that working now. The other thing that I want to look at is email. So this isn't a valid email. This is me typing some keys. Um, 
but it's parsing it as though it's an email or it's processing it as though it's an email address. Uh, HTML5 has a text box input type called email. So I'll change it to email and I'll save it up. I'll need to refresh the form so it picks up the new uh, text box type there. And now if I type There's some validation going on here to make sure that that's an email address or it has the common characteristics of an email address. And the first thing we saw, we were missing the at sign. So let's put that in there. Now let's submit again. Well, there's supposed to be something following the at. So it's not perfect, but it does okay. It, it's better than we had before. Um, so again, just some really simple validation I can do. Required field validators means it's a required field, you have to put something in there. It doesn't necessarily test that you're putting the right thing in there, but that something is there. Then the other thing with that changing that text input type to email, uh, it's looking for some of the characteristics of a user email.